The Wizarding World of Harry Potter is back, except this time there's no Harry Potter. Hey there guys, how are you? It's me, the Canadian Movie Buff, with a review of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. So Fantastic Beasts and where to find them is a spin-off of the original Harry Potter series. It's set within the same universe except this time J.K. Rowling takes her world and brings it across the pond to New York City in the 1930s. Eddie Redmayne plays this guy who's an expert in mythical creatures and so he comes to America to release them back in their natural habitat. But of course trouble rises and the creatures are let loose and they roam New York City and now it's up to this guy to find them. I'm not huge fans of movies to try to continue a story even after the original story is completed, so I wasn't exactly on board when I first heard about this movie. That's not to say I'm against spin-offs or that I didn't like this movie. If it can give us an interesting setting, a proper story, characters to root for, then I say go for it. So yeah, I was definitely on the fence and I wasn't sure whether I would like the movie or not. This movie wastes no time getting into the story. First th two minutes, boom, and that's how the first act of the movie went. It was fast paced, it got your interest, it wasted no time in giving you the information you needed to know, and it set up the story very well. We're introduced to this guy named Grindelwald who's sort of terrorizing the Wizarding World. Lately he's gone into hiding and nobody knows where he is, and that's the backdrop where we meet Eddie Redmayne. I liked how they were also building this whole other American branch of the Wizarding World that we didn't know beforehand. And they build this section of the Wizarding World so confidently, you could go back and watch the original Harry Potter movie. I'd be like, like, oh yeah, what was going on in America when Voldemort was taking over Hogwarts? It doesn't exactly spoon feed you, it lets you figure out some of the information for yourself. Granted, it may help if you see the Harry Potter series again before going to see this. The last time I saw Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 was four years ago, so I was a little out of touch with this fantasy world. And speaking of world building, we're introduced to Colin Farrell who works for the American Ministry of Magic. He comes into contact with Ezra Miller because there's this big black cloud thing that's going around and causing havoc in the muggle world. Now whenever one of these black cloud things pops up, it means that there's a young witch or wizard who is suppressing their magical powers. So Colin Farrell needs to find who this young witch or wizard and help them realize they're true powerful because otherwise it could bring a war between the wizarding world and the muggle world. Now that I think about it, I realize that they're making four more movies, so a war between muggles and wizards could be a good way to top off the franchise, maybe like the fifth movie? So we got Eddie Redmayne who's looking for these creatures that are roaming New York City and then we got Colin Farrell who's trying to stop a war. And by putting those two together it actually makes for a pretty solid story. Now there is one major problem and it's the villain. Not so much the character of the villain itself but how it's revealed. In the beginning of the movie you sort of don't see his face but five minutes later it's like yep he's the bad guy I called it. And then the movie tries to lead you around like oh no he's not the bad guy but then at the very end it's like he is the bad guy. So I'm just thinking what was the point in doing that if you're just gonna reveal that he's the villain anyway. So needless to say there wasn't really any huge surprises. No big reveals or anything like that. Even though all the characters were three-dimensional they sort of lacked the emotional depth and we didn't really connect with them the same way we connected with Harry, Ron, and Hermione. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter in itself has always had that sense of wonder that makes it quote unquote magical, and Fantastic Beasts is a continuation of that from the original Harry Potter series. It has its original story and it does try to make us connect with the characters, and it even provides a pretty decent villain, and I get it, it's a spin-off. It has its own story, setting, characters, and you shouldn't compare the spin-off to the original series, but in all honesty, I couldn't help but compare. It's definitely one of the weaker movies in this cinematic universe, but that doesn't mean I didn't like it, and if you have the time and the money, then you should definitely Definitely go see Fantastic Beasts and where to find them at least once in theaters. Alright, that's my review of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? What's your favorite Harry Potter movie? Leave your answer by commenting down below. And as always, this is Canadian Movie Buff saying I hope you had a fantastic weekend at the movies. See ya!